everybody knows the difference between a circle and a sphere. One is the analog of the other, depending about how you're thinking, depending upon how you're thinking about it dimensionally. But let's think about area versus volume, and we can think of the difference between a circle and a cylinder. Volume is an extension in dimensionality from area. So you can think of volume as a just series of endless slices of area. Or more simply put, you take a circle and you stretch it out into an extra dimension and you get a cylinder. Therefore, area stretched out dimensionally becomes volume. We will return to this in a little bit, but first there's a mathematical argument I want to make. But before I get to that, let's examine volume in a different way. All of these little black buckets are identical. They're four and three quarters of an inch deep, but that doesn't matter. Also, the units that we use are arbitrary. The selection of rocks that I'm using is the same stuff that I just used in that radon video. And the goal here is to find out when I fill up a certain volume with rocks, how much of it is rock and how much of it is water. Okay, that's fair. Now I'm being a bit crude, so expect that there's going to be some error. But look at the difference. What is water, what remains from this, is the percentage that is normally air in this set volume of rocks. I don't know if you can see that water level. That might help. The remaining unused water is about two and a half inches. We could call it two and five eighths because I could have fit a little bit more water in there. That was actually somewhat surprising. So, two and five eighths converted to a decimal is 2.625, divided by a possible of 4.75, that's the whole thing filled, and you get that we used, we have 55% of our water remaining. Just to confuse ourselves, there's a couple ways we can think about this. 55% of water remaining implies that 45% of the water is in here, which means that, again, there's 55% of this volume is stones. So the n amount of water, the volume that's in here, is the same as the volume of rocks that's in here. In either case, the relevant piece of data here is that the water here, which would be airspace if we remove the water, is necessarily 45%. The point being, 45% plus 55% equals 100. See, it's easy. Now back to dimensionality. If we take this solid cylinder, this volume, and reduce it and squish it into a disk, this is actually a circle, but imagine a flat solid disk, that is what a two-dimensional cross-section of volume is. It's an area of a circle. And so now let's go to the mathematical argument that I want to make. So if you go to the interwebs and you look up volume of a cylinder or area of a cylinder, you might get different answers depending on whether or not the cylinder is hollow or, you know, if it's if you're counting the area on top or bottom. So let's get rid of all of that and think about the area that we're looking for in terms of its constituent parts. That is to say, we're going to look at the area that occupies the top part of this shape, if it were to be solid, and the sides, which are just a rectangle if you, if you tease it apart. So the area of a rectangle is just length times width. And the length in this case would just be the height of the cylinder. The width would be, this is an easy calculation, you know this, it's just the diameter of 
this circle times pi. So we can figure that out really easily. Okay, here's the height of the cylinder. Here's pi times the diameter. And we just bring them up here, length times width. Multiplication is commutative, so we can multiply five times four and you get 20 pi, which is approximately equal to, hold on, let's call it 62.8. That number is square inches, but it doesn't matter. The label is arbitrary. Okay, I know you're following along, but what am I doing here? What is the picture? We're done with this prop. The point here is there's a screen on the end of the radon pipe and it goes down into the gravel. And so I want to be able to tell how much this being filled, this air, this volume being surrounded by gravel, how much is it impeding the flow of this pipe? Well, the maximum flow, if we, let's just forget about rates of fan, don't think about it in terms of cubic inches per second per, what, it, that doesn't matter. Right now, let's just think of, about it as a simple area problem. It's just a slice. The maximum amount of flow that a pipe can have relates to its area, how much open area there is. And the area of a circle is pi r squared. So we'll take this slice being our best case. A wide open case, it, or a wide open pipe is the best case. So we want this, all of this area here, the bottom and all of this, to add up to a number that's at least as big as this. In our case, we're using a four inch pipe that's inside diameter, and the radius is one half of that number. So we're just looking at an area being pi times two squared. That simplifies to four pi. And numerically, that's approximately equal to, let's call it 12.6. Now we just add these two numbers up. 62.8, that's the sides of our cylinder, plus 12.6, and that's the top because it will be wide open. And that gives us the total amount of area that will have gravel sides. See, easy. Okay, so I'll add it up. This is the total surface area that will be exposed to stones. Now, if you go back to the stones and water problem, you'll remember that it was 55% water. Let's just call it half and half to make it simple. That means that once this is surrounded by stones, assuming that the surface area is 50% rocks, then this total number here still has to be double in order to compensate for all of the stones impeding the flow of the air. I hope that makes sense. An unrestricted open pipe gives you 12.6 square inches of area through which a volume can pass. But this whole thing is 75 plus square inches, but you'll have to divide that number in half. And half of 75 is still a much larger number than 12.6, which would be completely unimpeded. Therefore, my argument is that the gravel does not impede flow. Because ideally, you wouldn't have any gravel there at all. It would just be an open pit. But in that case, in order to do that, there would be nothing to rest the concrete on. So I hope this got you to think. And if you see any errors in my logic, you know what to do with them, I've noticed. <laughs> see you later. Uh, one more thing, detail hunters. You, I'm well aware that this screen itself adds up to a certain surface area, but it's a very small amount, so there's no reason to point that out. Similarly, I also know that there's going to be water stuck to the sides of the vessel and to the rocks and all that, so let's keep it conceptual with our arguments, okay? And not so pick nitpicky. Really, the thing that I think that's most interesting about this subject relates to gravel. If you use gravel that's round as opposed to stuff that is 
has sharp edges, it will allow water and air to drain through it or pass through it much more readily. Because without sharp edges, it can't stack well. And in this case of spheres tightly packed, this is as tight as they can ever get. And stuff can still pass right through them.